Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, we rekindled and repaired the Forge of Souls. Now, there's not really anything we can do there at this exact moment, because I need to bring a bunch of stuff back to here to do anything. And one of the things I want to do before I come back is uh, we're supposed to get a template from, I think it's the son's daughter, who's at death's doorstep. Plus, we have another quest to do with a fortunate navigator at death's doorstep, so let's head over here. And I might as well explore this location while I'm going through there, right? Which actually is the last major unexplored area in the Blue Kingdom. If there's any more ports, it's probably in here. Alright, let's go. Um, I'm low on supplies and I have no more in the bank, so I bought a couple of Petrichor just in case I need them. I don't know where I can... Like, can I go through here at any point? Or is that all solid? I don't know. This looks like it's probably solid too. Anvil of Breath. Oh wait, wait, that's a bridge I can go under. Ah, it's not solid. Yes. But that's solid. <laughs> hmm. Seems like the back alley of the Forge of Souls. Varateen gemstones. Oh, that took a lot of spawn. Trophy, trying to reduce terror. Success, which is a failure. Am I hearing a Lagoy? Yes. Oh, that's one of the Lagoy that will attack me, right? Right? I would have thought it would aggro by now. Oh, wait a minute. It would. That it. I can't remember if the blues attack me when I'm yoked. I don't know if I've encountered them when I'm yoked. Now that I'm that status, I think I might be okay. Because they surely would have aggroed by now. Yeah. Yeah, we're fine here. Cool. Thing in the mist. I really don't want to increase my tears, but then again, I'm kind of curious what happens when I have even higher tears than this. I don't think I've ever been to three. Hmm. This will probably, doubling back will probably increase my tear, especially if I fail, which is a 50 50 coin flip. Hmm. What if this fails, though? These offerings, these are also 50-50 coin flips. Hmm. Wait, why does this say unlocked when nightmares is untroubled? But I'm not untroubled, my nightmares are awful. Untroubled is when you have no nightmares. 
Let's double back. Ah, terror went up. By five. You scout the mists. Suddenly your locomotive shudders under another impact, this time from below. There's a thunderous roar. Whatever it was you hit, it's big, aggressive, and offended. An agent, eh? Your driver cries as they reverse course frantically. I have no idea what an agent is. To get my, keep my terror down in this place, I think I pretty much have to take more nightmares, honestly. Enclave of the Dead. Oh, right. I'm collecting pieces of a lost sigil for the Clerk of Sevens. What is this? Let them drink the ichor in your blood. You've consumed enough petrichor that your blood has begun to turn into ichor. Thick as treacle in the color of milk. The dead crave it. That is disgusting. I wonder what that would do exactly. I can't do that right now, of course, but I'm curious about that one. Anyway, pursue the dead to show you a piece of lost sigil. Some are centuries old. If you share with them a tale of the wonders that are, they might tell you of wonders that were before Victoria touched the skies. When you speak, the dead are quiet. When you pause for reaction, there are none. When you're done, still they are silent. Do they enjoy the story? Your performance? One, a head shorter than the others, moves towards you. It grasps your palm and traces a symbol onto your palm. Once. It's not enough for you to learn the whole pattern, but it is a start. You'll need to feel the sigil three times before you can record the full sigil. Oh damn, I thought that would- uh oh, uh oh, I thought that would kill it. Oof. Claim a trophy, success, which is a failure. <laughs> Why do I always succeed? That Logos wants me. Yeah, they see you from really far away. What color are you? Is this the yellow one? No, red one.
It's gotta be almost dead at this point. Hour of the Wolf. Oh god. If I endure this lean, cruel hour as I always do, I am... <coughs> Excuse me, I'm gonna gain Terran. I'm at 82. Hmm. Indoor. Oh, oh, 87. Okay, now I finally got it. Oh, oh hey. Oh, I'm at nine terror. Let me get this. Oh, I want that fragment of a lost sigil, but I need to reduce my terror. Keep in mind, I think it's gonna do like five or ten. Did ten? At least the creepy music stops. It hit its butt against the wall and died. None of those are going to reduce terror. Loot the hold, sure. Faintly luminescent cage. Two uncanny specimens. The reason I left the Blue Kingdom and went back to the Reach is because I was at death's doorstep and couldn't do stuff there that I wanted to. Or at least I was worried to do anything because my terror was too high. But it looks like I'm going to be right back where I was before. I'm going to get there. My terror is going to be like 80, 90%. <sighs> oh, there's the horology in there. That's a wonder. That'll reduce my terror by a bit. Disturbance of the night. Answer your door. Um. Ah, right. Langley Hall. Yes, I will. We will be going to Langley Hall sometime and they make a mistake dreaming about Langley Hall and it hurts our hole not too bad I think wonders reduce your terror by about 10%. Approach it. The observances are mandatory for spirits at Horologian. There's an observance for every status and once begun may not be escaped. Ah, looks like the current observance is for invisible. So can't do anything but watch. Or notes for the ephemera? Oh, I guess maybe the invisible just can't even watch. Observe the ephemera. It's people eating petrichor, leaving it on the table as they go out. Is there anything I can do to reduce my terror at the shadow of the sun? Probably not. This is where the garden with all the stories in it 
was, right? Where I took one and I need to deliver it to, I think, the Empyrean? Hmm, let's get a port report. Seek an audience with the son's daughter. Oh, I thought it was over at Death's doorstep. It's at the Shadow of the Sun. Okay. Glad I came here. She is the Arbiter of Endings, the daughter of the Sapphire King. The Shadow of the Sun was built for her and around her. Outside the palace doors, the carefree attendant bows deeply. He's wearing a rope of red feathers and a pair of startling green boots. His voice echoes from a pot in his arms. The Arbiter of Fates has expressed an interest in meeting you also, says the carefree attendant. I trust I need not tell you the magnitude of the honor. But if you saw her in your current form, you would unravel. Follow me. He leads you to a structure at the edge of an ornamental lake. It's halfway between tree and lighthouse. It's a branching tower with a blazing globe nestled in its upper reaches. You're taken upstairs to a windowless room with off-putting implements hanging from the walls. Your eyes must be replaced by gemstones, says the attendant, measuring your face with calipers. That is the simplest part of the procedure. Um, can we not? I'd really rather not. He lifts a small bell and rings it, carefully watching your response. Your thoughts must become song or they will turn against you. We will have to replace your skin with the language of light and your tongue with flame. All perishable flesh must remain here for safekeeping. <laughs> oh no. <sighs> oh. Allow him to ready your form. Cask of Devardian Gemstones, a moment of inspiration, a vision of the heavens. I can do that, I don't want to. Allow the Nameless Spirit to assist. Takes a moment of inspiration. Mm. Yeah, so I think that's just like a cheaper way to do it. Since we have the help of the Nameless Spirit, we don't have to pay the cask or vision of the heavens. Okay, um, yeah, let's do it. I hope it doesn't increase my terror to have my eyes replaced with gemstones and all of my skin shucked off or whatever. Your eyes must become gemstones, your thoughts become song, your tongue fire, and your skin correspondence. The spirit has anticipated the stones and the skin. Making your tongue become fire is on you. The attendant lays lays you on the bare stone floor at the center of a circle of engraved correspondence symbols. He takes from the wall a scalpel as long as a sword. This will hurt for a moment, he says. Then you will lose your comprehension of pain. Symbols flare like stars. The scalpel slides into you just above the collarbone and traces your outline with delicacy and precision. There's only a little blood. Your skin comes away in rinds like shucked fruit. <laughs> The blaze of correspondence devours you. The world falls away. <clears throat> the palace is a vortex of blossoming, unblossoming, kaleidoscope architecture. She at the center, a nucleus of violent light, the daughter of a star. She is a pillar of blazing time and rushing song, a winged and skeletal sun. A seven-limbed, seven-headed colossus of sapphire and silk, whose words dance like fireflies on the burning wind. Welcome, she says, her voice a howl and an orchestra and a shivering crystalline song. Oh, we can do a lot here. Ooh, request a testament of the feather. I actually need one of those. Um, I need one to gain access to the forge properly. Like to get all the way into the forge. I need a testament of the feather. I wonder if I can only do one of these things and then I have to like petition to speak with them again. Let's listen to the Arbiter's request. There is a reason I have agreed to meet with you, Traveler. Despite our disparity in stature, says the Arbiter, I have a request. 
I can perform miracles, traveler, says the son's daughter, her eyes blossoming like flowers. There are only two things you can do that I cannot. The first is die. The second is exit the Blue Kingdom. Fortunately for you, I require the latter. The sky shatters. Her mouth sings something similar to laughter. I have decided to establish a Blue Kingdom embassy in the Reach. Our isolation must end. I've chosen you for this task. Hmm... They want to end their isolation. That's interesting. Do I have any particular reason to refuse? You will not help the Blue Kingdom expand its influences. Like, I don't... I don't think the Blue Kingdom is particularly evil. It's certainly strange. All these layers of bureaucracy are annoying. Actually, I just remembered what I saw beyond Death's Door. I'm sure someone like the son's daughter knows what's happening behind death's door, right? Yeah, okay, never mind. The Blue Kingdom's evil. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to help him. No, refuse. That just increased my terror. Then I have no use for you. The Arbiter's words crush you beneath them like boulders. The palace falls away. Your new shape twists, folds, retreats. The flaming symbols that have replaced your flesh extinguish one by one. The stones in your eye sockets shatter into teardrops and crumble down your cheeks. It's excruciating in a dozen different ways. The ache of a still healing wound, the agony of scourged flesh, the pain of a bitter departure. When it's finally over, you find yourself once more confined to the twitching, decaying flesh wreck that is your body. The carefree attendant solemnly helps you to your feet. Well, that didn't go over so good. Will he even agree to see me again? Hmm. Yeah, apparently. It's going to take another moment of inspiration, though, but... Alright. Let's do it. We put all our skin and stuff back on. And... Now we're taking it off again. Sorry, I was just distracted by this. What is this? You've gained a form of... A form resilient... To resplendence. New total two. So every time I do this... Gain that, whatever that does. What does that do? Well, the most important thing is to request a template for the Clay Conductor's Companion. Only the son's daughter has the authority to interfere with the Amaranthine Edict, which forbids the usage of the Forge of Souls for bringing forth new creatures. You speak your request in a slim flicker of light like a candle flame. It wavers as though blown by a great wind, but you hold firm. The light grows brighter and warmer. Your entreaty becomes insistent. The son's daughter listens in silent contemplation. When she finishes, your flame grows to a sudden roaring incandescence and then, just as suddenly, dies. She conveys that the edict is inviolable. However, she implies obliquely that something composed of old parts would not be in violation of the edict. Consult the spirits of the forge. The minister in white was cherished once. You will require her skill. Okay. Wait, I lost a testament of the salt? It took a testament of the salt? Shit. That was hard to get. <clears throat> well, at least we haven't been cast out, so we can do something else. Let's request a testament of the feather. Most officials can't give these away without careful consideration of the cost. She, of course, is the exception. In exchange, she only desires a story. 
As you tell your story, you speak not in words, but in storms. Ink-black clouds coagulate above. A rain of words soaks you both in memories, leaving you shivering with nostalgia. When you reach the crescendo, lightning crawls across the horizon. The son's daughter listens in silent rapture. When your story is over, the clouds boil to nothing, but pools of meaning linger. Sunshine burns them away. You have earned your dispensation, she states. Testament of the feather, thank you. Oh, and we still haven't been cast out. <clears throat> Plead for an indulgence, what exactly is that? 30% chance of success, but the nameless spirit could be of assistance here. A single word from the son's daughter can cut through the Blue Kingdom's bureaucracy like a superheated knife. The nameless spirit indicates that it has come before the son's daughter before. Its arguments can lend weight to your words. I'm not sure what an indulgence actually is, but I don't see any harm in trying. Not surprisingly, I failed. You try to speak and your tongue lashes flame. Flames rise around you, smoke billows until all you can see is a burning sigil rising above a blizzard of ash. This is it, the single word that the son's daughter grants you in response, and for a moment it consumes the world. No. Yeah, so you have to wait a while if you want to request another one. But no punishment for failing. Didn't even gain terror or anything, so, so I might as well just do it every time I'm here. Detach yourself from the radiance of the Arbiter of Fates. You will need to discard your new form. It will certainly be painful. Oh god, I gain terror again. You do that every time you leave. Mm, okay, yeah, I think that's the same. Yep, that's the same description as the last time we left. Right, Garden of Unflowers. Anything you want to do to maybe, like, reduce my terror? I'm not going to pick an unflower because that's a fucked up thing to do. No. No, there's nothing we can do here. Great, my terror is 86%. Great. Yeah, that's not a problem at all. Nope. If I get an event that's going to allow me to take more nightmares to reduce my terror by 50, I'm going to take it. Should I even go to Death's Doorstep? Sure, let's hope I get an event on the way there. Out of food, but remember I have Petricor. No event. Okay, that's worrying. Let me buy a couple fuel. Should we just go for it? Let's go for it. You can do this again after two weeks have passed. I've been here, here within the last two weeks? Huh. Anyway, make your way to the Endless Furrows. Oh, I have to find my hole, don't I? Yeah. You are one of the yoked. Is this different from how I entered before? Acquire a shovel. Everyone has a door to their death buried somewhere in the mud. The trick is to find it. To find it, one must dig. Many of the spirits are digging with their hands, bolstered by the grim patience of the dead. You don't have that kind of time. You drop into one of the trenches that crisscross the churned landscape, and walk until you find a yoked spirit with a bundle of shovels slung across her back. She looks you up and down for a moment, then shakes her head. Voiceless, she drops to one knee, extends a finger and scrawls shakily in the mud at her feet. Would you abandon your duties, she writes? Only dead or ephemera may dig. Well, 
shit. We were allowed down there through like a, a special little pathway when we took the body with us from the fortunate navigator, their friend. I should have just done it then. I think I need to regroup and maybe go back to the reach to reduce my tear. Let's go back to Sky Barnet. See if I can survive going down to Sky Barnet. Buy these since they're a bargain. Let's go. My extremely high terror, coupled with my lack of supplies, has made me want to go back to the Reach pretty bad. We're at 90% terror now. It's maybe been long enough for me to get a terror reduction when I go back to Sky Barnet. Maybe. Rumors of mutiny. Shit. I think I have to increase my nightmares. Yeah, increase my nightmares, lower my terror by 50. So, as far as the mutiny goes, do nothing. What will come will come. That's terrifying. You do not punish your crew or turn one against another. They know you know of their schemes and find your eerie calm unsettling. The mutinous incidents cease for now. Have the mutineers changed their mind or are they biding their time? Is there a pistol under a pillow waiting for a chance to end you? Your nightmares are now three. Horrifying. A visitation, an invitation to dinner. The cold is sharp again today. Engineers have already had to fix two burst pipes. Your thoughts turn to the bristle-mustached corpse who has been clinging to the hull of your ship. You must be cold out there and hungry. The dead are always hungry, aren't they? Hmm, I can't invite the men because I don't have supplies. Do not invite him in. The timing is inconvenient. You have many pressing tasks. The matter of McFadzen's reprimand, amending the captain's log, and the brasses need a damn good polish. Despite the terror reduction, I'm still going back to the Reach. Whoa! A scorn fluke in the Blue Kingdom? That's the first time I've ever seen one of those here. I don't know if I fought one with these new weapons not having the homing missiles. Ow. Do they have anything that reduces terror? 
so, right? I can make another Wrath of Heaven because my nightmares are so bad. Hmm, tearing off a trophy will substantially reduce my tear. If I succeed, 79% chance. Failure to commune with the Scorn Fluke may substantially increase my tear. Or use its spines to heal my hole, but I will gain tear. Hmm. I'm not actually sure which one I want to do, because I'm about to go to the Reach, so am I scared of substantially increasing my tear? I mean, kind of not, I guess. I actually don't have that many more tickets for the, uh, the circus, though. Which means I can't actually just reduce my tear a huge amount of times there. Like, a good amount of times, but not just, I can't just go from, like, 90 to 0 there. I don't have enough tickets for that. Hmm. Let's tear off a trophy. Oh, I succeeded. Okay, maybe I don't need to leave then. Hey, when did I get supplies, by the way? Did it convert my petrichor into supplies or something? The piece you rip from the eyelid is taller than you are. It will make an awe-inspiring banner. A stoker fusses over where to hang it. Too close to the fires, and it'll become desiccated and frail. Anywhere else, and it'll impede movement. You'd leave its final placement for the crew. A captain shouldn't get drawn into the niceties. Yeah, okay, I think I'm gonna stay. The Duluth. Let's see if we can get supplies from this thing. Or I could mourn the dead, which would reduce my terror. It's either that or try to get more crew, which I don't want, so yeah. More in the dead. 21% down to 16%. I feel like I'm getting real lucky with the terror reductions now. It's like the game knew I was going to leave and it's like, wait, 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 no, I got you. Still going back to Sky Barnet though. If for nothing else than to repair my ship. Yosemite. Reduce terror or I could look for supplies. Uh, that's probably what would happen if I... Well, let's just enter. I think we can look for supplies, fuel, etc, etc. Ooh, just a partial success. I think that means I'm going to lose crew if I don't... If I don't leave. Actually, there isn't an option to just leave. Okay, let's go to the galley to scavenge supplies. I now have two supplies, but I had two supplies before. Then I lost crew and, ten and gained ten tear. You seize tinned food in a crate of unrecognizable vegetables, frozen hard. No sooner are you back aboard than the wreck breaks apart, spilling its remaining contents into the sky. It's only then that a headcount reveals your one short. Shit. That just hurt me a little bit. Yeah, I don't get it. I was at two supplies before and now I'm still at two supplies? Does it have something to do with Petrichor? Petrichor seems to work, work really weirdly. Like maybe, now that I have actual supplies, maybe it stopped using the Petrichor? So now I'm using the two supplies I just got? And I have no idea. Oh, hello. Ah, it passed me by. No reason to kill it. Your otherworldly artifact opened the way to the trove of souls sealed within. Oh, did I use an otherworldly artifact? Whoa. Uh, what just happened? 
Everything in the background kept moving for a second. Even though the thing popped up and now something else popped up? Um. Unsettled dreams. Let's not seek company this time. Mm, I'll gain terror if I do this. How many tails of terror do I have? 85. So I'd be trading three tails of terror for a vision of the heavens. I have much less vision of the heavens than tails of terror. But I still have like 20 visions of the heavens, so I don't really need it. Okay, actually, let's seek company then. Failure and gain terror. Yeah, what was that other... This thing, this is what popped up. And the lamps burned blue. The lamps on the interior of your engine dim, then flare again. But now they burn a stark electric blue, flinging hard-etched shadows against the walls. <clears throat> What's happened to the fires, Captain? A crewman asks. The lamp fires dance as if a wind whipped them. Hmm. Invent a comforting lie or snuff out the lanterns and fly in the dark. What cost this? I've never seen this happen before. The lamps are watching. The fires are their blue, blue eyes. <laughs> I don't want to fly in the dark, though. Let's invent a comforting lie. Celestial vapors is a good all-purpose rationale. Even though I succeeded at that, I still gained a little bit of terror. The crew are mollified. Your explanation included many long, reassuring words. A natural quirk of the heavens, you promise. You're sure the lights will return to normal soon. For now, the lamps continue to burn blue. And do they burn brighter when you pass? Do the flames lean hungrily towards you? Duh. Wonder if that's just a random event in the Blue Kingdom? Blue flame, blue kingdom? Or if it was caused by something specific? Please give me terror reduction. Whoa, I just saw the blue flame thing again for a second. Uh, cry havoc. Sorry, dog. Uh, other things to do. Driver's cabin. Sorry, buddy. Distraction outside. Attract him there. Yes, it did reduce my terror. Why did I see the blue flame thing for a second, though? Is it going to pop up again now? No, weird. <coughs> anyway, guess we're fine. Let's see how many port reports we have to turn in. I think just two... Yeah, just two. Hmm. That's kind of a problem, because I want to trade gratitude for a cryptic benefactor so I can take another shot at the rental dispute thing at the House of Days. But that takes two gratitude, which means I won't have anything left over to repair my ship, and I'm at half health. That's too dangerous. Repairing my ship is more important. There we go. Don't need more crew. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else to really do here, actually. Other than, well, check the prospects and stuff. Let's see what's available. There were two prospects for Death's Door. Not going back there right now, though. And I already have two prospects for the Forge of Souls. So I'm going to do both of these prospects and bring a bunch of stuff there. Um, along with my Testament of the Feather and the... The progression on the quest where I don't actually have the template, but <clears throat> I know who to talk to about making the Clay Conductor's ideal singing partner. 
So yeah, we should have everything we need to go do that. Let's do it. Space is really, really tight. Taking the stuff both for two prospects and all the stuff I need to make a bunch of things. But I think I got a decent amount of everything I'm going to need. I hope. Let's go. <laughs> Hey, buddy. <clears throat> I see we're heading the same direction. Oh, I can persuade the dead to show me a piece of lost sigil again? I thought it was like once per type of event. Well, heck yeah. I could do the thing that reduces terror, which might be smart, but I'm only at 18%. I want the sigil. <clears throat> you have a piece of a sigil. Is that actually a new piece, though? I'm not sure. It wasn't clear. I think they mostly killed themselves by ramming into that thing. Sorry, buddy. Otherworldly artifacts. It's either that or sovereigns. Yeah. One otherworldly artifact. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> see smoke coming behind. Ah, Spearfers. The blue one should ignore me. There's two Spearfers, though. That's a big problem. Damn, I didn't think that would reach that far. Yes. Don't want to get too much in the way of this, because the homing shots from the Logoi or logo seem to come towards me if I'm kind of near it. Surely we almost have them. Ah, oh shit, I didn't see that rocket. Ah, you got him. Good job. Where's the other one? Oh, the other one's also dead. Sweet. <clears throat> Why the survivors have joined my crew? Nah, I'm fine. Salute the engine's plundered hull. Failure, so I just get a jumble of undistinguished souls. Retrieve an otherworldly artifact? Heck yeah. Got it.
some music here. 